All right, we're back with the recap show, and we're now moving on to session two. In this session, we had the 83 kilo men, the 93 kilo men, and the 105 kilo men. Um, to start off with, with the 83s, Marcus, why don't you go ahead and give us the summary of what happened here since this is your weight class? Yeah, sure. So uh, this battle was basically as tight as it could have possibly been. Uh, Deuce Gruden took first place uh, by body weight um, since uh, Sean Jin attempted the American record pull for the deadlift, missed it. And, you know, at the same time, uh, Deuce Gruden's third deadlift uh, got overturned, if I recall correctly. It got, it, it was, it was a miss lift on the platform. It was a miss and then, and then it got overturned. And then it got overturned to be a good lift. Yes. Yes. So originally, uh, Sean Jin was going to, uh, push for that Carpino wasn't really in the scope. So decided to just, you know, um, or rather, you know, pull for that win and then decided that the Carpino was in, uh, the scope in the view. So he decided to pull for that. Uh, didn't make it. And at the same time, uh, Deuce Gruden's third deadlift got overturned. So. Um, by body weight, Deuce Gruden took first place. Sean Jin took second. It was a really tight battle. Um, I think that both lifters did re uh, really well. Some other lifters that, um, you know, I'd like to shout out, you know, Alex Sador did really well, showed out. Um, I think he did a really uh, solid performance, you know, especially being uh, really young and especially uh, Sean Jin being really young too. Um, mm -hmm. I, th I think that the 83s um, just is comprised of a lot of very uh, – detailed and you know those you know small details that are really important in lifting and i just think that you know they're very concentrated and they did very well so absolutely all right let's pass it on over to julia okay well um so i don't really um know a lot about what happened here because i was um weighing in um but um i do know deuce like you know, there's always drama with his deadlifts. Um, it happened at Megan Nats um, and it happened this time, but you know, this time um, it was to his advantage. Um, I don't know if Sean, he said he didn't regret um, going for that um, third deadlift. I think it might've been for the Carpino total. Um, I'm not, you know, quite sure on that. It was, it was exactly it was. for the 825.5, yep. Okay, so, um, you know, obviously, uh, obviously, like he didn't really um, regret that um, Deuce winning on body weight, you know, like he he wanted the Carpino total. Um, you know, there, there's a lot of drama there. They're both um, really great lifters and it would have been cool to uh, to see, but um, I didn't get that opportunity. So I don't have much more to add. All right, go ahead, Sam. Uh, yeah, it was cool to finally see Deuce have a double that wasn't overturned to become a uh, no lift and it was actually overturned to become a lift um, and I, I thought it was cool that Sean went in with the expectation or um, the intention of not going for anything but the Carpino regardless of if he won or not uh, so I, I really respect that decision to go all in commit to pulling that American record and to pulling for the Carpino um, you know ultimately it was actually pretty close and uh, I think that's that's pretty scary if, if Sean Jin is pulling that and then as other lifts increase as well, um, it'll be very interesting to see what him and Deuce do in the future. Um, but yeah, I think it was really cool that Deuce finally got on the right side of that uh, jury calling out that third deadlift because I know he's always had an issue with third deadlifts in the past. Um, but yeah. For sure. And Sean, um, that 330.5 that he tried to pull at the end, he got it up. He, he pretty much locked it, but then he just couldn't hold on to it. Um, he lost a grip on it. So he's definitely, I mean, you see the rate of progress that Sean Jin is making. There's no question in my mind that he's going to total a 10 time body weight total eight, eight thirty at some point, probably in the next calendar year, in the next 12 months. I mean, he basically has it, uh, he had it in his hand right there. Um, I think it was really cool to see Deuce coming over, you know, um, he's a legend in the sport. He's a, these are both junior world champions. So it was great to see them battle head to head. And, uh, with Deuce comes, um, big coach, John Gruden was in the house and it was cool to just kind of see him and see everyone like taking selfies with him and taking pictures of him. And, uh, he actually came to the press conference and sat in the front row while we asked questions of Deuce. And we did interview, we did do a press conference with both Deuce and Sean. So go check those out if you want to know a little bit more details of what the thought process was going into it. 
um, in the future. I think Deuce now he's coached by Jason Tremblay and the strength guys. So I think the future is really bright for him. He was fired up. Like he, he sounded, and if you listen to the press conference, he says he's, he's, you know, coming back to the nationals next year. He wants to win a national title. He'll make, he'll go on whatever national team um, we can get him on. So I think that'll be really cool to see in the future. Um, and it was great meeting him and, and, uh, you know, the head coach, John Gruden, John Gruden senior. It was very fun to see. So um, great family, um, great family support. And so really fun time. And just before we move on here from the 83 kilo class, I do want to make a shout out to Jonathan, Mike Losa, uh, Mike Losa. He finished in third place. There's actually a nice battle here for third place uh, between him, John Tong and Alex Sador. Alex Sador would have had it if he had hit his third deadlift, but he missed. And Mike, you know, um, with great game day handling by Arian, was right in there to scoop up and and take that bronze medal. He finished with a 697.5 total, which his best ever is a 705 in full power that he did it down in Panama at the NAPF championship. He tried to pull or he tried to uh, bench uh, the U.S., uh, the national record of 200.5 kilos, which he's done more than that before in the past. He's done a 203. So he definitely had every reason to believe that it would be there, but it just wasn't there on the day. Um, but he would have walked away with not only a bronze medal, but also a national record in the open division. As you guys know, Jonathan, Mike, uh, we call him Mike. I'm sorry. I keep calling him Mike. Um, Mike is, uh, our first world re record winner, uh, for power of team America, which he did at uh, bench nationals, uh, bench worlds, um, in the master's division. So he's a huge venture. And then as I mentioned on the preview show, Mike is one of these guys that will lift in a session and then go on and do spotting and loading afterwards. And uh, true to form, he that's exactly what he did here um, at uh, Classic Open Nationals here in Austin was uh, he lifted. And then I believe it was even in the exact same later in the same day because um, he was in the morning session. I think he was spotting and loading in the afternoon session. Um, and if it wasn't in that session, I know he was spotting and loading the next day. Um, so just an awesome person. Um, these are the kind of people, um, that we have in power Latin America, people that really give back to the sport that do a lot for the sport and that are not always heralded, um, for just their lifts, even though, you know, he also came in second place in uh, M ones in uh, in, in Canada this year and, uh, masters worlds. Um, so he's a great lifter and he'll be, he'll be back and he'll probably be on, um, multiple U S national teams. I know he's going to bench worlds cause he qualified at bench nationals, um, just a couple of weeks before this. And so, um, really pumped for him to get a bronze medal and be up there on that podium. Let's move on to the 93s. So 93 kilo weight class. We got a legend in the game, Bryce Lewis, former world champion. And, uh, we also have, um, um, a, a legend in the equip side and Gregory Johnson. So, um, Let's go ahead and pass this one over again to Marcus to start us off with the analysis on this one. Yeah, sure. And uh, I just want to start with uh, the information about, uh, well, really the lack of, on my part, of um, chance. And um, hmm. I'm not familiar with uh, why he dropped. Sam, I'm did he sure tell you? He... Um, he just uh, told us that he's not doing it. Uh, that yeah, he, he didn't won. really he didn't really say he 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 kept his cards pretty close to his chest on this i don't he didn't say that he had an injury or anything like that um i just think yeah i think he just said like he's not worth risking it um uh, risking possibly getting injured or possibly having to peak twice make weight twice whatever um with the sheffield only a month out i think that's the reason but he didn't he really didn't give us he, very much information he had a great poker face uh, we kind of asked him some questions. He didn't, he just like, ah, it wouldn't be smart for me to do it. That's what he said. Yeah, sure. So, you know, with, with uh chance not there, uh, Bryce Lewis definitely had a really open lane to kind of do what he does best. And that's exactly what he did. A little bit of a fumble on his second and third deadlifts, but honestly, that wasn't even necessary for him to secure that victory. And I thought that, you know, it wasn't really that close of a competition, but, you know, to the other lifters, um, they did very good jobs. Um, and that's all I really have on my part. All right. Um, go ahead, Julia. Um, yeah. So um, I was actually in the warm up room by the time um, Douglas rolled around. And I think uh, Bryce was pulling for that Carpino total, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And it would have, it would have given him, if he, if he had hit his second deadlift, it would have given him an 870, which would have been two kilos over the qualifying total. Yeah, he was, um, you know, 
obviously pretty um, distraught about that, but you know, he, he put on um, a great show and he is a great lifter and I know he'll bounce back from that. And um, yeah, I mean, he did a great job. Gregory Johnson, um, I wish I could have watched him lift. He's uh, one of my favorite lifters, always super fun to watch. He's He's got a personality, man, like, mm -hmm. yeah. but um, yeah, that's, that's all I really have um, to add. All right, go ahead, Sam. Yeah, like in the press conference said, Bryce and Natalie said that uh, his training was indicative that he probably would hit the Carpino on the day, but he said that he was cramping very aggressively every single attempt, and it made him very uncomfortable, and literally everything he did to prevent that did not work, uh, so sadly we didn't get to see him pull that 355 that he took two stabs at. Um, you know, watching is pretty evident that he was in a lot of pain, but it was very respectful that he even went on the platform and gave it his all on his pulls. Um, you know, he still secured that opener, so he had secured his total in the win. But, you know, it's a little sad that we didn't get to see him um, pull for that Carpino. It would have been very interesting. But I know that he will correct some things in the future. He said maybe he'll just cut a little bit less weight in the future, something like that. Um, but overall, it was Bryce's session for sure. And it was also very cool seeing Greg and uh, Greg's energy in the warm room on the platform as well. For sure. And shout out to uh, the bronze medal finisher, Wesley Mull. Um, he also had a, a nice performance. He was coached by, by Natalie Richards. So it was great to see Natalie in that role as a coach. Um, but getting back to Bryce, I mean, a true ambassador for the sport, um, a multi-time you know, national champion and just one of the smartest minds in the sport. He actually could barely walk. He was cramping so hard. I saw him, he was laying on the ground. Natalie was like working on him, trying to, trying to get those cramps out. He was cramping super hard. Um, even when he came out and tried to pull his second, he could barely walk off the platform. Natalie was helping him get off the platform. We did do a press conference with him so you can hear all about it and like what sort of some of the things that he's going to try to change in the future. It is a shame because I mean, on his second, I mean, they were going to hit the qualifying total to punch their ticket to Malta on their second deadlift. And then who knows where he could have gone up from there, maybe something around 885. This is a guy who's totaled well in the 900s before um, at a upper, a higher body class, about a higher body weight. So I think like, and he, he again is, uh, says he's committed to the 93s. So he'll take whatever national team spot he might get. He might be, he'll go to the Cayman Islands on the NAPF team. And um, we'll see him back for sure. He's definitely not done. He's definitely capable of putting up something close to, you know, 890 or something and almost pushing up into that high, into that 900 range. So it's going to be very exciting. The 93s are so stacked in the U.S. Um, with him and Chance and Keiko and Gavin. It's going to be a massive battle to see them all for. I can't wait to see them all on the same platform next year at Nationals. I think it's going to be spectacular. Um, and then also... Huge, huge shout out and thanks to Bryce and Natalie for not only, I mean, the man is cramping, he can barely walk. He just had like a heartbreaking performance where he's this close, you know, this close to hitting a uh, qualifying total and punching his tickets back to open worlds again, um, and still had the heart and, and just the, um, personality to come and participate in the press conference. He gave a press conference. And then he also throughout the weekend, him and Natalie both came and asked really insightful, great questions um, at the press conferences. We couldn't have made these press conferences any better if it wasn't for them coming to these press conferences and asking great questions for us. Um, because as you know, like Sam and I were running around doing crazy stuff the whole time. Um, we didn't, we weren't watching the numbers very close and stuff like this. So um, huge shout out and thank you to Bryce and Natalie for doing that for us. It was, it was really great. And it just shows what kind of people they are, um, true ambassadors for the sport. They love the sport and will do anything to make it better. So, um, thank you to them. Um, all right. Last weight class that was in this session is the one Oh fives. And, uh, we had a runaway here with Justin Rogers totaling 875, handled by Ellis McLean, um, went eight for nine, had a great day. Um, do you want to add anything to is it, anyone want to add anything to this weight class? He didn't hit the qualifying total. He was, he was close. He's only been training, you know, seriously for after taking a break for like a couple months leading into this, he's definitely a super strong dude. Um, he's a, actually a retired captain in the army. So thank you, Justin, for all the service that you've done for our country. Um, and he's got a bright future, um, going off to work for, um, a really big consulting firm getting his MBA from Rice University. Smart guy, jacked guy, um, and he's gonna keep he's gonna keep lifting and getting stronger. So hopefully we'll see him on a platform again once his life settles down with all the 
life PRs that he's setting um, out there as well. So um, does anyone want to add anything to this to this weight class? Um, Not a summary. Unless, sorry, Julia. Oh, yeah. I mean, also, I would just add that he has uh, room to grow into this class. He weighed in at 99.02 kilos in the 105. So I mm -hmm. think you know, he has potential to really do some big things in the future. Yeah, and just a quick rundown. Alan Morelos um, is like the crowd favorite. He's one of the SBD crew. Um, he finished in second. Um, in a, he actually had a tight battle between him and Nathan Dunn um, in second and third place. And um, Alan was a crowd favorite. He works his ass off. He's one of these guys that, like I said on the previous show, he went to Turkey to help handle um, part of the Marty Agos crew that went over there. Um, and so you, they got a great community there in Dallas, Fort Worth area with, with Marty and, and everyone under his team. And uh, they're all over at the Arnold right now working the SBD booth and stuff. So these guys are just super hard workers. Alan was in there like setting up, you know, taping down cords and setting up the backdrops and stuff like this the day before. Um, super hard worker. So big shout out to them. And then Nathan Dunn was on our NAPF team. He's a young lifter. He's getting super strong. So I'll be really excited to see what happens to him in the future as well. Um, all right. So next, let's move on. So that was a, the morning session on day two. Let's move on to the uh, evening session on day two, where we had just two women's weight classes. We had the 63 kilo women and we had the 69 kilo women. And to start off with, Julia Williams was in the 63 uh, kilo weight class. So let's let her introduce this weight class. Go ahead, Julia. Um, okay, so um, the 63 kilo weight class, um, it was myself, Megan Scanlon and um, Rebecca, I don't want to butcher her last name, um, but uh, I think it's Logo. Logo, yeah. Logo? Okay. Um, so um, there's not much to say here. I mean, you know, Megan Scanlon's a dominant force. Um, I think she was a little bit sick uh, coming in to the meet, um, you know, so that um, affected her, maybe made her squats like not as, you know, she not what she wanted to hit. Um, and then bench, I know I talked to her about bench before because I have my own issues with bench, um, but she had been, she had an uneven bench um, pushing up, um, you know, a, a year ago and she kind of fixed that, but it, you know, made a surprise return um, and she was able to push through it anyway. She was able to hit the Carpino total. I think she was the only female to hit the Carpino total in this session. Um, and yeah, she, she did what she does and she, she executed, um, myself, I was pretty injured, um, through the whole thing. I think, you know, if you watch the live stream, that was pretty obvious. Um, yeah, I, my hips were uneven on the first squat. And so I knew like, you know, there wasn't, you know, just take what, what's there on the day. I just tried to not, um, basically I just tried to put up a total, um, <laughs> at that point. Um, so yeah, um, I was trying to pay attention to everything that was going on. And um, there was a great battle on the 69 kilo weight class, which I think we'll get to. Um, yeah. In a little bit. yeah, I mean, Julia, you showed a lot of heart out there, like missing your opener squat and then coming back and hitting, you know, uh, seven straight lifts after that was really awesome. Um, so you, you did a great job with that. Meg, she, she did give a press conference afterwards. Um, she talks about everything that went into this. She was definitely sick coming into this in the warm up room. She was coughing like really bad. Like she was like really coughing a lot. It was almost scaring me how, how hard she was coughing. Um, and so she was sick. Her training was on, super on point. She's someone that doesn't miss a session or anything like that, but um, she was very sick for like 10 days out um, for this meet. So I think that definitely took some off of, off of her on the day. She's, you know, still kept it interesting. And in the end, her deadlift saved her. Um, she hit that 520. She needed 518.5 to punch her ticket to Malta. And she did that. She handled business like a true pro and, um, and then came and talked about it in the press conference. So you can go check that out afterwards if you want, but um, yeah, very good. Very cool to see. Anyone have anything they want to add to this weight class? No, no. nothing else. Yeah. No. Um, just if you're looking at the score sheet, she didn't come out for her third, her third squat. Um, so she really only missed that third bench, I believe. Is that right? 
Yeah. And so um, good to see too, like this is her bench now with the new bench rules. And she, again, she talked about in the press conference, all the things that she's changed. Um, so it's cool to see that she's still retaining a lot of strength there. And she's determined that she will break her bench PRs, even with the new bench rules. So, um, and to put this in context, she totaled 505 at worlds in South Africa to win the world championship, um, tying a three-way tie on body weight at 505. So it's pretty cool to see on a bad day. Now she's totaling 520. We all know she put up that huge 537 and a half back in December in Brooklyn with the old bench rules. So i um, super pumped to see what she'll be doing, uh, after this. All right. After uh, the other set, uh, weight class that was in this session, this was a super tight session, only one flight. It was super fun to watch. Um, we had ourselves a battle on our hands here in the 69 kilo weight class um, between Chelsea Savitt, who ended up winning it, Claire Zai, who was the favorite on totals coming into this, and then um, Kelsey McCarthy, also the surprise uh, you know, equipped lifter coming over. And then we also had a fun story with the junior lifter, Carolyn Connor coming in and smashing a bunch of PRs as well. So, um, I'll pass this one again over to Julia to talk about first. Go ahead. Okay. So, um, you know, I was in the warm-up room. I saw this going down. I was trying to, um, pay attention as much as I could, um, to this, um, Chelsea Savitt had the day of her life. Um, and it was really fun to watch. Um, I, you know, I, she pulled for the Carpino total. She didn't quite get it in the end, but, um, just, it was a great day for her. Claire was, you know, she had a hard day. She was struggling, but, um, she really showed a lot of heart and she really tried to push through. And I think, um, that was good to see, you know, like a lot of people might not have, um, done that. And she really just, you know, tried to do her best. She's a great lifter. Um, and I have no doubt, you know, these two will be putting up even bigger totals in the future. Um, I do want to say one thing about, um, I believe it was Kelsey McCarthy's deadlift. Her third deadlift, she jumped from 182 to 207. And she made it, which was just ridiculous. That's one of the craziest things I've ever seen. Um, so yeah, that's my, that's my roundup. Carolyn Connor, you know. That third squat was, that was something to watch. Um, she has a really bright future. Uh, I don't know if she'll stay in this weight class. She's quite tall, but um, either way, she's, you know, she has a really bright future in this sport. Yeah, she said in the press comments, she's going to grow into this weight class. Um, definitely, you know, uh, like if we're doing a, a junior world's preview show, um, she's going to be up there for junior worlds um, for sure. We'll see if she can go handle business in Scottsdale and punch her ticket over to junior worlds. But she did a great job out there. Um, who, Sam, you want to add anything on this weight class? Uh, yeah, uh, I thought it was really cool. Uh, Chelsea's bounce back story. I thought it was really also interesting how she literally started pulling sumo like one week out from the meet and then committed to sumo for meet day. Um, but overall, it was a really awesome battle between her and Claire. And uh, Chelsea just slowly extended herself um, over Claire's total and then ended up uh, putting deadlifts in a place where Claire had to pull something that was a little bit out of her range on the day and Chelsea closed it out. Yeah. I thought, you know, um, coming into this, I think a lot of people were sleeping on Chelsea um, because I saw her at bench nationals and she was telling me that her training was going really well. And you could see it with even just what she was posting. She, she told us in the press conference that she held a lot of her cards close to her chest on this with like, she had to hit some big singles and stuff and prep like in the, like about like a week out, 10 days out, whatever. And, uh, but if you were even following just what she was posting, there was a lot of rep PRs in there, a lot of all-time rep PRs, you know, coming back from a back surgery and being out of the sport for a minute and stuff like this. Um, so it's a great feel good story to see someone who had to take a lot of time off because of her back injuries and then comes out and she's known as be, having a huge bench and she tied her, her, uh, bench comp PR and bench, which was 125 that she hit at bench nationals. She tied it in a full power meet, um, after squatting a huge squat as well. Um, you know, cause uh, she did hit the American record squat with 855, 185.5. Um, so, um, she does that and she can still put up a huge bench. She's the gold medalist from bench in South Africa. Um, so, but it was really her squat and her deadlift were, were the things that were like a big shock to everyone. 
And, um, and you know, I believed in her. She's a hard worker. She's super smart. She's got a great coach in Kristen Dunsmore. She had a great team handling her with her husband, Andre and Bill McCarthy is like one of these wizard uh, level game day coaches. Um, and so she had, and she said in her press conference, you know, she had a perfect day. Um, she, she, this was her coming out party. She fell a little bit short of the qualifying total, but she set herself up really well there in the alternate pool. Um, just to say something about Claire's eye. I mean, she was obviously off. She, her, her training was derailed in the, in the final, like two weeks through, through having sickness and a lot of other issues that, you know, very busy, like professional life, things like this you can listen to her press conference to me in her loss. You know, she really, um, impressed me almost even more with the way that she handled it. Um, she was very emotional afterwards, you know, um, because obviously she, she put so much into this prep for this, but she still came to the press conference, like a true sport, you know, like, like that's what you want to see the kind of, um, attitude that you want to see the heart of a champion. And she gave a, a super good press conference, like just super composed, extremely smart person. And to think of like the emotional state that she was in when she was going through that, uh, man, hats off to her. I wouldn't have been able to do it. Um, I know that there were other lifters that, that wouldn't have been able to do that. And so I just think she really proved a lot, even in her loss. And I know she'll be back and she's going to do something special in this weight class. I hope she sticks around this weight class. Um, she said, you know, it was too early to tell, but, uh, what she's going to do in the future, as far as whether she'll, she'll stay in this weight class or maybe think about going up to 76 or what, um, because probably the weight cut was a factor and then obviously getting sick and everything coming into it was a factor. So, um, but still a very bright future and I'll, I can't wait to see her on the platform again. Um, and then, yeah, just, um, uh, you know, uh, the, another really feel good story was, was Kelsey McCarthy and just surprising people with what you can do with equipped. If there's any equipped lifters out there, come to open nationals and lift and then Carolyn Connor too. So great story there. So Marcus, you got anything you want to add on this weight class? No, not, not much. That's important. <clears throat> I thought that, uh, they both did really well. And I mean, you know, when you see the, the chalked hands with the double smack going in with Chelsea, I mean, you know, it's, it's game time. And, uh, yeah. I think it was, she probably felt really good knowing that, you know, a bunch of people like, including like, uh, you know, like six pack Lapidat and, you know, King of the lifts, you know, not really, you know, talking about her as much with their show and, you know, she completely proved them wrong. So I bet she feels really, really happy about that, uh, proving everyone wrong and, um, shout out to, to Claire's eye. I mean, she did uh, phenomenal despite, you know, all those life issues. So I think that, uh, I think that that session or that uh, weight class specifically was a really, really a uh, tight one. And I thought that everyone did really well. Yeah. I mean, to come back from the things that Chelsea's come back from, you just, you got to love that. It's a great story. Um, so, and she's not done. So she went to worlds last year from the alternate pool. Maybe she'll go again this year and we'll see what she can do over there. Cause she's, she's on one now and her training is really on point. So um, the 69s, if she gets in on that world scene, the 69s around the world are going to have to watch out for Chelsea's habit. 